I know it's been a while since I've done any videos, but I've been busy upgrading the shop. And today we're going to do a laser engraving video, which is probably going to be a little more frequent on the channel uh, as I learn how to use this uh, tool a little bit better. So I'm making a set of business cards, and uh, they're for a local veteran-owned plumbing company while they're run pumper trucks. At any rate, uh, I've got the design in here. Uh, I've dialed in the settings. Uh, as you can see, I've got <laughs> lots of practice cards there trying to get the settings right where I like them. And I think I found the sweet spot, so we're going to go ahead and run out uh, yeah, probably 50 of these. I got my jig set up already. It's already dialed in for uh, where the laser needs to be. So as you can see on the card, it's centered top to bottom, left to right. It's right where it needs to be. And now I have the settings dialed in, so let's bang one out. I guess let's burn one out. Now I'm running uh, really tight line clearances on this, so the laser is moving uh, 0.03 millimeters per line that it burns. And I got the power dialed down so that it doesn't cause the card to cut. Because I've noticed when you put too much power into these uh, aluminum business cards, they have a tendency to curl on you. So by running a fairly high speed at a very low power, uh, you can avoid getting the cupping. And the cleanup pass does a good job of knocking out kind of the dirtiness of it. You'll see what a difference that makes when the laser starts moving from right to left here in a second. And you can see it cleans those letters, cleans up everything. Everything that's been burned, it will clean up on. I'll go ahead and pause this in the middle of the O so you can see it. And you can very clearly see the difference between the right side and the left side. And this is also running very low power now. I'm running at half speed, a little less than half the speed on the cleanup pass. They're fatter uh, lines of resolution, but it's a, a slower uh, path. And it's also running uh, very low power. I think I'm running 20% on this pass. But it makes a big difference. And you can tell how low the power setting is by how quiet it is. My main burn is also on a pretty low power setting. Not as low as this. I believe my main burn is 35%, which is really low. But running lines as tight as the ones I'm running, you kind of need it low. There you have it. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to, you know, run this over a microfiber just to knock off the dust because there, there is dust on here. You might not be able to see it too good, but there is absolutely dust on this card from the uh, paint and the aluminum being ablated, which is basically burned away by the laser. But they came out pretty good. Now on these cards, we also have an image for the back, and uh, and we'll get to that. But I'm going to burn out these fronts first, so I don't have to change the program. Okay, now we have here the reverse side for the business card. And as you can see, I made a, uh, a QR code for it. Making QR codes in Lightburn is super easy. You go up here, you click on uh, click on Tools, and you just click on Create QR Code. It'll ask you to make a box. And then you just once you make your box, like I just threw right here, you'll enter whatever text you want in there. 
Uh, if you want a website like I did right here, you just type in the web address and it will make a QR code that when you scan on it, take you right to the to the website or it'll ask you if you want to go to the website. At any rate, so here we are. We've got this ready to rock and roll. Now we have a couple of different parameters here. This card, uh, I have uh, a fill image here, which will be the lettering in the QR code. And then I have a line image, which will be uh, the two trucks at the top. Those are going to need different parameters. And I believe I've set them differently here. I have. Now, what I learned on the other one, uh, on the other side, for the fill ones, I wanted to take this. We're going to bump it up to 2,500. We're going to drop the power down to 35. Oops, 35. Um, we're going to cross hatch one pass. Uh, and I don't, I believe we got rid of that. So let's try this, see if it works out. So I'm just going to take one of these cards, flip her over. Now we're going to do the framing here. This is going to be a tight squeeze getting this on the card, but we now have her boxed up. Let's go ahead and group everything, frame it, and we're going to do tool only. Okay, so now I can see them off here. So what I'm going to do is move the laser over. That's a bit much. Okay, left to right we're looking good. Now we got to negotiate top to bottom. That'll be kind of easy. Oh, right on the money. We got lucky there. We don't have to. Uh, we don't have to negotiate with it too much. All right, let's fire this up. See how she looks. This is the first pass. I hate risking burning a card, but uh, I'm pretty sure these settings are good. Let's turn on the uh, exhaust fan here so we're not breathing in all that ablated paint. first glance it seems like the, the trucks are barely there you can barely see them but I mean you turn the card even a little bit they come right out so uh, the only option I have here is to dig harder with a laser and I don't want to do that if I dig harder I'm gonna lose detail I actually really like that I don't think I'm gonna mess with it and uh, I'm gonna get to burning the rest of these out Okay, now there is one detail that I forgot to mention. It's one parameter that I did not change this time around, and that is the the uh, the line interval. So before I was shooting 0 0.03 millimeters, now I'm shooting 0.1. So it's it's much further apart, and you know I got to tell you, I think it shows. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that change because I'm seeing a little bit of I'm seeing a little bit of untidiness around the very edges and like the E's and the S's. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that line up. This will add a little bit of time to the burn, but it will make the burn a little nicer, so I'm okay with that. Okay, let's have a look at this. Let's do a comparison between the two. There should be a noticeable difference. So we're looking at the the E's and the S's, where they round at the top. Uh, it's much different. Well, I shouldn't say much different. It's a noticeable difference to the naked eye. No, it might be a little bit difficult in this video. So what we're going to do is throw it on the microscope real quick, and I'll show you. Here is the card that we did with the 0.1 millimeter spacing. Now, let me 
see if I can focus that just a little bit. It's pretty close. Okay, so you can see, yes, it's a little slappy. I mean, you know, there's some mixed, missed pixels here and there, and it's not quite perfect around the edges. It's not bad, and to the naked eye, it looks pretty decent. But here is the other one where I dropped the line interval down to 0.3 millimeters. Maybe they're the same. Oh, no. Yeah, that's night and day. That's night and day. This is much better. So we're going to leave it at 0.3 millimeters. I have the power setting low enough that it's not damaging anything. Uh, we're not transferring extra heat or anything like that. You see how fine these lines are. It's just... It's crazy. It's crazy the amount of detail you can fit in here. I mean, here's the wheel. You got all your tread patterns in there. And I mean, look at the size of it. <laughs> in real life. That's pretty crazy uh, how accurate these lasers can be. So, we like these settings. We're going to burn the rest of them off with the point three settings. Uh, it was just something I had forgotten to, uh, uh, to change in the settings. But we've got that fixed now. Let's bang the rest of these out. you're wondering what's making all the noise it's the exhaust fan okay so there are the cards the QR code does work I did front and back on all of them but that's it uh, I'm using the Monport GI 60 uh, it's a 60 watt MOPA laser it's a fiber laser so Instead of using a gantry with an X and a Y axis, it uses a galvanometer, which is a pair of mirrors up here in the head. One mirror tilts this way to bring the laser closer and further, and the other mirror tilts this way to move the laser left and right. And it does that, as you see, at incredible speed. It's a pretty cool tool. Um, it's definitely one of those things that uh, it's got specific uses. Now, I can use it to engrave slate coasters. Uh, I can engrave metal and do these business cards. Can't do, really do plastics, can't really do acrylic or glass. Uh, that would be a CO2 laser, and that will probably, we'll probably do one of those next summer. But for now, it took me a while to learn the software to do the, the laser, uh, the fiber laser, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. It's interesting to watch. It's fascinating, really. But that's it. There's a little set of business cards for a buddy of mine, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gulp's Garage.